just came out shows that only 48% of Americans want to continue sending weapons to Ukraine. I find that quite remarkable. The rest were either unsure or opposed. And that is despite the media narrative, despite the narratives of the White House and the two political parties. So, and you see in Europe, it's changing dramatically. People are saying, are seeing this has gone on for a year already, enough. And so I think, you know, if only 40% of the American public wants to continue sending weapons, shouldn't only 48% of Congress be in favor of sending weapons? Yeah. Which means 52% of Congress should not be in favor of sending more weapons? You're supposed to represent us. Mm -hmm. And I did want to thank the speaker for opening up Congress to the American public yes. again. Yes. After COVID. Yes. We are really, really pleased. And we heard if the Republicans take over the House, it will be open to the people. We didn't believe it, but here we are. So we want to thank him. Yes. But now we want to say the majority of the American public are not in favor of this blank check for Ukraine, particularly for the weapons. Now, there is a, a resolution that was put forward by Matt Getz, H.R. Res. 113. I don't like the name of it. H. It says what? the... Right, say it one more time so you can write it down. H.R. 113. Okay. I don't like the name of it because I think it does it uh, it is um, not um, reflective of the sacrifices of the Ukrainian people. It's called the Ukrainian Fatigue Act, but I think it does reflect the sense of the global community. Mm -hmm. And um, there are eleven members of Congress, all Republicans, who have signed on to that. Mm -hmm. I have heard from other Republican members that they don't want to sign it because it calls for an end to all support for Ukraine, including economic aid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I then have said, well, if they're not in favor of that one, put forth another one that says...